Oh, so really quick before we get into today's tour, I just want to mention why are we in this Class A RV? Morning, baby. Good morning. Perfect. My husband is hotter than my coffee. <laughs> well, just as hot as my coffee today. Cheers, lovely. Thank you so much for this. Oh God, I need this. Oh. Good morning, y'all, from the beautiful Pinewoods Resorts here in Utah. It's like the Duck Creek area. We've been spending quite a bit of time up here. I don't know. There's something about being up here for both Dave and myself that just feels really rejuvenating. And I have to tell you, that O part scared the crap out of me for a second. Dave is off. He went over and closed the door because as he was bringing out the coffee, Brady was trying to say, well, what's out there? What's out there? And our cats are indoor cats, so don't want them getting too far off. So. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, the, kid, the kitties were like getting ready to head on out the door. Yeah, so we had one really cozy night. So all right, be before that, let me just tell you guys, a lot of you may already know, and if you don't know, that our RV, Desert Snow, is getting repairs. We were in an accident with him, and we're both okay you know, right now, but it's just one of those things where we have the opportunity to try and explore and, and uh, different rig. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Having some fun. Having some fun. So It's a bit of our therapy, but it's not our therapy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and this time, you guys, Guys, we went actually a lot bigger than what we're used to and it was pretty darn cozy and before we gotta we're gonna give you guys like the ultimate tour but it's a beautiful morning right now and we've been trying to get on this healthier kick so right now it is time for us to head off to some beautiful trails maybe we'll kind of kind of talk to you a little bit more about that hopefully it might be some folks up there that we can join us on this walk it's beautiful and it's easy and you might enjoy it Okay, so change of plans, just like the life of a YouTuber, we went on this amazing, beautiful hike, but our SD card went kaputski. And so we, uh, unfortunately, that beautiful hike we did, you will not see, but you could actually check it out in a video that we put together not too long ago called Something I Haven't Told You. If you want to see that beautiful hike of Cascade Falls, you can check it out there. But right now, we met some awesome locals here in the Duck Creek area of Utah, and we are about to do something that we've done before that's quite an adrenaline rush. What do you think, babe? I'm psyched. <laughs> awesome. Here we go. So can I just quickly say how awesome it's been for us coming up here. The people up here are so nice. I know. So inviting. Go out of their way to introduce themselves. I mean, can we live in a world that everybody does that? Because it's kind of nice. Come on, people. <laughs> Come on, people. <laughs> say hello to Tanya and Dave. Because you know, it's always a party. Wow, so they kind of live down a unique little road here to get to them. It's a little, okay, only cross, what, uh, oh, 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 vehicles, okay. OHV crossing, there must be like all terrain vehicles, okay. Okay, so we're still trying to find directions to, uh, the directions are taking us a little bit of a unique way. I, you know, obviously out here in Utah, UTVs, those type of vehicles are street worthy, right, babe? Exactly. But the road they took us down, we can only get there if we had a UTV. It, it was a so, UTV only road, yeah. and this is not a UTV. No, yeah, so ways to not calculate that. <laughs> yeah. so we have to uh, recalculate. <laughs> okay, this looks like we might be on the right path. It's big enough for cars. Okay, and trucks and possible RVs. So, and yeah, mm -hmm. and that's the main road over there. Give you a little tour of this angle. So we are here with our friend uh, Wayne, who's uh, now just, if you can hear the roaring, ripping and roaring behind uh, behind you guys, he's bringing them out. I'm trying to be respectful and not show the property. <laughs> so, oh my God, but it's beautiful. So beautiful here. One, two, three, UTV. One, two, three. One, two, three, UTV. We're going to the nurse's office. We got this. I'm going to start this thing. There you go. Oh, yeah, I got to hold it. We started this. Don't go forward now. Please don't. I don't want you to hit my truck. Okay. 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 Okay.
have not been to one of these in such a long time. Dave was saying and it makes so much sense. You have no choice but to smile. You don't want to smile too much. You might eat a boatload of mud. Okay. Right. Yeah. So when we're coming up on somebody, yeah. somebody trail towards, etiquette coming up. Then whoever's in the lead gonna hold up however many fingers is behind you. Okay. So you do the leads. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But we'll but know when another you way. Go by, you're gonna come by and signal one behind you. Gotcha. Uh, okay. All right. And then you go none. So one behind us. Okay. We got it. That's cool. Great stop here on our UTV adventure. You can see behind there's actually big old lava stones here on this side and then also across the valley there. And that, that valley was actually full of lava uh, at one point. And then of course the lava hardened on both sides and created these massive boulders with just crevasses. But just imagine just all that lava flowing down. Unbelievable. I mean, you can see all, the, all this lava rock that had hardened on the side of the flows. So that beautiful, beautiful creek you see flowing right there. Well, this is Duck Creek. And right behind me, if you look up and over, it just kind of ends right behind us over here. So Jill, she actually gave us a, a beautiful lesson about how this flowing Duck Creek that you see right here with us, this eventually stopped. And I'll show you that in a second. But it just, this flowing thing just stops. It's kind of interesting and unique in a way, but we're going to see it just stop. Hey! Hey, hey! It just stops. It's amazing, right? It you just all this, stops. All this water just kind of flows right through all the volcanic rock and boom, boom it's gone it probably comes out eventually down like the virgin river or something down into a zion oh yeah just what does it do close and just stops <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing though. and the water is so pure too incredibly pure water kind of coming up oh, here no. it's kind of filters out through the ground and then goes back in so funny like at this point I feel this is like our backyard we've been here so many times <laughs> exactly back to Utah back to Utah it is an absolutely beautiful drive though I mean this pass through and the views and if you catch the right spot you can actually see Zion off in the distance when we saw that in the winter oh absolutely beautiful oh it's just amazing so I'm looking forward to exploring this town I mean do you think everybody's gonna be dressed up in Shakespearean garb well not everyone because we are <laughs> hey speak for yourself this could be well, Shakespearean with these old puffy shoulder and you could be it looks stones. like a, a stones could they're, be. they're pretty Shakespearean they're very Shakespearean <laughs> Behind us here, you actually see a cinder cone and a lava flow from actually what they say is a very relatively young lava flow between a thousand and five thousand years ago. So that's young in the lava world, guys. But it's, it's super impressive up here. You can kind of see these lava flows all around here. And it's pretty cool knowing that at that cinder cone, you have basically lava kind of pouring out of the ground, building up this cone and then flowing down into the lava flow below it. Nice job. Now, before
we're heading to get something to eat and also to go to the Shakespeare Festival, we stopped in here at the Frontier State Park Museum. They have a whole bunch of carriages in here. It's cool, you can kind of see these stagecoaches all along. I think those might be Concord coaches. We actually have one behind, which is a kind of the more traditional, more uh, inexpensive stagecoach. Apparently it was $600 versus a Concord one, which was about $1,100. But we have one over here too, and I think we have someone in there. Hello, yeah. kind sir. Would you please kindly remove yourself from the road before we run over you? Oh, Ma'am, do, do you have the mail for me? Do you have any great poupon? <laughs> Special delivery? <laughs> I like that. And this one over here is kind of crazy. There's actually a bullet hole in it. It was apparently a bullet hole that was removed from the seat on this one. This has seen some exciting days in its life. I bet it has. I bet it has. I know you've got a secret like a child you want to keep it. But your shiny eyes reveal the simple truth. And every time you look at me, you start to smile immediately. It's funny, you don't have to say a word. And I know you ought to shy to tell me what's on your heart. And life's too short for me to wait for you. Ah, yes. Panning for gold. Grab your pan and some rocks. Do a little shuffle and pan for some gold. Will we be lucky today? I don't know. Hmm. What say you, sir? This is a good home for me. Feels pretty comfortable, I think. What do you think? I don't know if I'd call that comfortable. I, get a nice, I need a nice little mattress in here. Should be good. Mm. But actually, seriously, the uh, apparently the final occupant of this jail was a bear. Oh, so this is a jail. This is apparently a jail, or at least a temporary jail until they could come and get kind of whoever the outlaw was or whoever it was and uh, bring him to the sheriff or something. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty comfortable. Now behind me is the old, oldest surviving log cabin in Southern Utah. And check it out. Oh, wait. We have an occupant. We do. This is very, very cool. I love the little artifacts that they have. Ah, I guess what they found here. Do you know if these artifacts are placed in here? Were they found there? The reason why they roped off, maybe they want you to touch it because to preserve it. Right. I think this was. I think it was moved here eventually and preserved. Ah. As I understand. And uh, so these are all the artifacts from the, probably this cabin. This right. Kind of all the canned goods. Is that bread. Wow. That, that bread that looks got a little. Some pretty some, uh, strong yeast. Yeah. That one kept it together nicely. Looks like they completely redid the fireplace here. That, I think they actually have fires, it looks like, in the wintertime. That's pretty cool. Yeah, keep things toasty warm in here. Wow, this is very, very, very cool. Part of history here. I think they need a new mattress, though. Yes. That's a little uncomfortable down there. Well, they weren't. You don't sit on that lovely mattress. Very cool. Welcome to the line shack, y'all. So there's one of two line shacks that were here in Utah in early days. This is the one that was built in 1945, but there were two basically that house individuals that helped maintain the telephone lines between Bryce Canyon and Cedar City. So there's a lot of rich history here, and there's a picture that shows what this looked like with a mound of snow, because you know there is a ton of snow here in Utah. If you've actually ever driven past some of the places where you see like those lines in the ground and the poles to the top, like if you drive along sort of the Duck Creek area and higher up in the mountains especially, you'll notice that the snow can get as tall as Dave. It, it, it's taller. I mean, it's just, it's pretty crazy. But welcome to the Line Shack, y'all. The Line Shack. Take a look. Imagine learning those numbers on the board. I mean, the skunk set on a stump. The stump thunk, skunk stunk, and the skunk thunk, the stump stunk. What do you think about that? I think the schoolhouse rocks. <laughs> Okay, oh, I found something. Ooh, oh, you know, oh, oh, and he's, oh, and he's got the broom, so he knows he's been a bad boy today, so. My new hat. Oh, I'll put it sideways there, like, yeah. My yeah. new hat. Dunce cap. <laughs> God. Everybody, please take a second and hit that subscribe button and join us on all of our adventures so you don't miss a beat and you'll get an A+. Plus. <laughs> So for a special treat tonight here, we're getting into Cedar City. 
for a little dinner at a place called Las Flores Family Mexican Restaurant. And it really is family run. Dave was just right up there asking, you know, is it family run? And the young lady pointed out, says, yep, it's my mom over there and my sister's here. So it's a family run spot here and pretty popular. So we're gonna put that to the test. They've already started dropping off some of those delicious uh, salsa and chips. Yeah. Nothing like starting off the evening with a nice, delicious horchata. Mm. Nice. I think it's a nice, delicious, and huge. Huge. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see your face. Not supposed to. So we just placed our order, and I will tell you, it was really wonderful to meet the owner, um, Dalia. And the place is called Las Flores, and it's not because it's her last name. It's because Las Flores is like flower. And her name is Dahlia, which is a flower. Her daughter, Jasmine, she's got Violet. So it's all this kind of floral inspiration dived into one name, Las Flores. And it was really cute to hear her story, how they had just started. They started this about a year ago. And their very first few Fridays, it was like they couldn't get four tables filled. But it really is a family-run business here now. They picked up. We're excited to dive into some of the popular items on here, like pozole, which I'm excited about. Dave is definitely going with, oh, I think it's called a abondiga, which is like it's a, a soup with their homemade meatballs. And that's a really great attest to our, our true authentic places. Everything is made in-house. So we're gonna get those paired with corn tortillas. I think when you have a story like that and then you start diving into your food, it just makes the food taste that much better. Isn't that right, Dave? That is right. <laughs> You're always right, Dave. <laughs> Wow, babe, these quesadilla tacos look like a little bit of heaven. The cheese and everything in there is just all melted. It looks amazing. And of course, the consomme. Are you ready to dive in? I am, but there's a secret way to eat these things. A lot of people don't know about how to eat them. So why don't you show them how you eat birria tacos? <laughs> all right, so first up, you must, of course, have a little red onion on there on the top. <laughs> a little bit of red onion. A little cilantro. You got, of course, you got to squeeze a little lime on there. Squeeze the lime. And then you pick it up, yeah, and everything you put on just falls off. <laughs> Don't worry, it's okay. Then you just dip it in here with everything, everything falls off. Oh, just, oh, okay. All in there, get a little of that goodness. Make sure okay. you get that consomme. This is the right way, but this is your way. This is how we're doing it tonight, baby. Tonight. Here we go. <laughs> see, that is the perfect, oh, you see the cheese? Did you see that cheese in the cheese was there. Oh my god, that is so good, man. I'm, I can't wait for mine. You've got to try You better start. So I'm going to try Dave's way. A little of the, mm, little of the cilantro. Ooh. I'm going to, the first one's just going to be a little consomme. Ooh. Mm. Well, that is cheesy. Mm. What do you think, man? That is dynamite. I don't know, I like the crispiness of that tortilla. The cheese, you saw the cheese. It just went for days. The consomme is nice, nice little salty rhyme to it. Of course, with the cilantro in there. I think my next one, I'm gonna put a little lime to get a little bit more of that kick. But this is dynamite. A couple of specialties too. One, if you are interested, which I am not today, but there is a bacon wrap shrimp. It's supposed to be dynamite with the husband's homemade cocktail sauce. Homemade. I just spoke to Dahlia, and apparently she grew up in Mexico with her family cooking albondiga soup. It's very, very traditional and very authentic. No, we right? never even heard of it. Exactly, we haven't actually heard of it, and boy, it tastes so good, it's so fresh. You can tell it's kind of a, just a mix of so many great, like, fresh vegetables and those meatballs. Oh my gosh, and that broth, Ooh. and of course, you had to spice it up a bit, so just like my man, spice it. Spice it up. Let you, since the day I live in a dream. Dahlia, thank you.
So Dave surprised me with some tickets to see Romeo. Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet, right, babe? Exactly. And it's supposed to be a replica theater, like the Globe Theater, an mm -hmm. outdoor theater here. It's supposed to be really beautiful. I'm excited to check it out. Me too. And it's at the Ingolstadt. Ingolstadt Shakespeare Theater. Theater. So I'm excited to see this production. And they put on the quite. A, there's a lot of uh, Shakespearean productions that go on. Oh no, on it's here. A, they have a Shakespeare festival that lasts from like June until October, I think. It's, wow. It's an incredible event. And just walking down these beautiful streets and right? this neighborhood and these gorgeous trees. Ah, this is like a great evening for a show, but they might not let us film inside. So this may end here for you guys. And we'll let you know how it is afterwards. Ah, my Romeo. <laughs> That was actually a very... It was a fun play to watch. Three hours long, but boy, it was powerful. Yeah, no, it really was. I think it's actually the first time I've ever seen Romeo and Juliet <gasps> in the Where theater. For Where for art thou, right? Romeo? Well, it's great. There's like so many different theaters within this little nook here. Uh, Shakespeare, and it was wonderful. Yeah, it's I mean, amazing. The crowd really got into it. Yeah, the crowd was really into it, and the theater itself is spectacular. Yes. Right, it's really amazing. And henceforth, now that we're under this beautiful night sky, I think we go find a little dark corner. That's right. To look at the stars. <laughs> That's right. We play we play to wake up a lot. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it is an absolutely beautiful day here in Utah. But I have to say, last night was unbelievable. I mean, it was so impressive. It was amazing uh, going up to Cedar Breaks, you know, almost like 10,500 feet. And the, I've never seen the Milky Way so clear like that. Just it looks like this cloud across the sky. It was so cool. It was amazing. And of course, being at the new moon, the sky was pitch black. So you just yes. saw so much of that. And of course, the Perseids or Perseids, I'm sorry for pronouncing it. Wrong. The meteor shower was, oh my gosh. I couldn't believe what we saw. The tails of those things yeah. flying over like 100,000 miles an hour. They're like a speck according that to the- That blows my mind yeah, like, like a, a grain, of, grain sand of sand. Or something. That blows my mind. I've never seen so many shooting stars. I was no. just like, there was so much going on up there. Yeah. It's amazing. It was amazing. I just think it just brings, I don't know, just nature. Just everything about the night sky. And nature, it's all around it's us. It's all around us. It's all over us. And it's so therapeutic. Like I felt like even though it was freezing cold because the wind was like a constant blowing right. so the temperature felt like it dropped i felt like just laying back in the chairs looking up at the stars and just watching that just felt rejuvenating for my mind well, we had these chairs blankets <laughs> over us so and that blankets. was nice that was awesome i just think it's the perfect way to enjoy the night and a perfect way for some coffee to kick okay. off the day cheers <laughs> Oh, so it's beautiful. One of the cool things at this campground that we're at here, you got these little off the beaten path trails right here within the campground. We got our green drink for yes. the morning to get those energy and that uh, regulation flowing. It's actually gorgeous here, right there? It's really nice and a great spot to walk. You oh, know, yeah. the, the air is so refreshing. We're still up about 9,000 feet, we right? Are. So and I, I feel like it's one of those, um, we can just explore just right around here, but we got to get our steps in. Got to get that morning exercise yes. and keep up with it. And the Wi-Fi is great here for working. Let me tell you. That's amazing too. <laughs> exactly. Verizon. I think others have problems, but for us, what do you say? It's not sponsored. Yeah, not sponsored. <laughs> not not sponsored. sponsored. But it's a great, uh, great service here. I'll tell you, in this high altitude, whew, just that little walk, or it wasn't little, it was a pretty good walk. You could feel it. Oh yeah. Breathing heavy. But without further ado, what do you think? I think it's time for the tour. It's time for the tour, baby. Oh, so really quick before we get into today's tour, I just want to mention why are we in this class A RV instead of our boy Desert Snow? Well, a lot of you may know, and if you don't know, we were in a recent accident in Desert Snow, and right now he's at the collision repair shop getting repaired for, we don't know how long just yet, but this gives us an opportunity uh, right now to kind of try out different rigs to see, should we go bigger, should we go smaller? And that's why we're gonna share with you this tour today. But I will say this, I know we probably mentioned it earlier, but you know how we 
we are, folks. We have short attention spans, so it's just a little reminder. All right, let's get into it. Welcome to our 2016 Thor Vegas Class A camper van. We've been living in this now for about a week, and believe it or not, it's actually the first time we've ever lived in a Class A camper van. Before Tanya shows you the inside, I'm gonna give you a quick tour of what this has on the outside. Now the Vegas is obviously very different from our Winnebago Echo, but it's only 26 feet in length and our Winnebago Echo is 23 feet, so it's only three feet longer, but that's really where the similarities end. The engine here is a Ford Triton V10 engine. It really does drive more truck-like, it's very loud, and it's obviously a heavier vehicle and does not have nearly the same type of pickup. Now I should also mention that this is a gas powered engine, so it's not diesel, gas. It gets about 10 miles to the gallon. And we even have a slide out. Now, because it's only 26 feet, you don't have a ton of storage actually compared to some other Class A's. You do have the typical storage underneath, but you'll see as you go around, there aren't huge compartments. As an example, this is actually the biggest compartment. You can see it actually goes through to the other side as well. So it's a pretty good size compartment, but this again, it's the biggest one that this Vegas has. Unlike many Class A's, this one is small, only 26 feet, like we said. And as part of that too, it only has a 30 amp hookup like our Winnebago Echo. While the Vegas does have an onboard generator, what it doesn't have is are any solar panels on top or lithium batteries on board. Which we love about our Winnebago Echo, which has 450 watts of solar on top and about 8,000 watts of lithium batteries on board. And one thing we love about the Vegas, because Tanya and I love our movie nights, is Check it out. Got our outside TV with great speaker system. That's better than kind of setting up our movie projector, right, babe? That's right. Watch it right here. So that's a quick tour of the outside. Let's see if Tanya's ready for the inside. Hey, babe, you ready? Uh, We're ready for you. Uh, oh, hi, everybody. Yes, just give me a quick second while I just tidy up a little bit. It's been extra lived in. <laughs> <laughs> Well, time to get the inside ready. I realize there's one thing I forgot to mention, which is a big difference between the Vegas and our Winnebago Echo. And that is, of course, the Vegas has a black tank. For those who have followed us with the Winnebago Echo, it has a cassette toilet. This is actually the first time we've had a black tank in a rig. So it's gonna be our first black tank dump coming up. Stay tuned for that. Welcome to the inside of our RV. Uh, can we give Dave a thumbs up? Cause I think he did a great job on giving y'all a tour on the outside. And I'm gonna give you guys a tour on the inside. And you know what? It's lived in, so be prepared. Here. And I have to say one thing, it's obvious the space in here in comparison to ours is quite, it's just a lot of space in here. But let's start off with the front of this rig here. And I have to say the captain's chairs are just super plush and comfy. It feels like you're, you got two lounge chairs there and a coffee table in the middle, as you can see. Now I'm going to sit in this chair here because Brady has claimed that chair right there. See, that's Brady's chair. He's got his name all over that one there. I definitely love this aspect. I mean, having morning coffee, just kind of sitting up here. When you open up this huge the screen here, the window is just amazing. And if you can't see peeking out here, and I'll open it up in just a second, because if you don't think about cameras, if I open this up right now, it's all gonna go silhouette. So this is quite amazing, you guys, where you have like a, a lot of big window space for great views, a lot of natural light that comes in there. Bailey's already claimed that section. So that is hers. I can't say and here, there he is. So there he he Brady knows. Brady already knows what his seat is like. So I am just I can't knock this has a lot of space what's really cool and i'm not going to show you because i don't how to function and I don't want to do anything. This here is a bunk bed. You know, it's a smaller class A, but boy, the use of space is interesting. You got a bunk bed right here that kind of drapes down if the chairs are in the right position, someone can sleep there. And let me just uh, turn this around a second. Well, 
Welcome to our living room slash my office slash dining room slash extra bedroom area slash slide out, which we don't have in our Echo, but boy, this is definitely something I can get used to. It's got a lot of space in here for to be able to stretch out all my hard drives. And this actually turns into a little bed here. So it probably sleeps in my opinion, one, two here and two in the back. Could probably sleep six, five or six, in my opinion. I think that bed can actually fit three. So it might be able to fit six in here, but there's a lot of space in here, which I find, you know, it's a little dated for sure. You know, I've had a little bit of different say with some of the things in here, but it's got a lot of space in here for sure. Love the big windows. There's folks on the outside in their campus so that we don't want to show them. You know how that etiquette goes. But there's a lot of storage up here. So three cabinets that go pretty deep in the back for storage. Outlets all over the place. So if you can see, I'm already dangling a piece right here. And look at that table, long table, something we can get used to. It's super cute. Now, I'll meet you in the kitchen. Welcome to our kitchen space, y'all. Okay, like with any kitchen, I could always use an extra space in an RV. Most RVs don't give you that space unless it's a huge RV. But in something like this, it is functional. Got a deep, older sink, got the gooseneck. I love that with the spout that comes off to be able to get to those dishes and, and things a little bit easier. Of course, we bring our Berkey everywhere we go in an RV because that just to us just saves plastic and we get good water out of that. It's got a three burner propane, which is nice and something I really like in this one. But I wish we could probably have in desert snow but don't is this overhead hood which has a light and fan and it vents outside so if i'm cooking in here whatever's being cooked in here it can vent outside now we do have a portable sort of like uh vent that we use in our rig when i'm making things like this but a lot of times because our space is a little smaller i tend to cook outside which i enjoy anyway so it's got the microwave which is great because you know we like to have popcorn with our movies there's definitely some cabinetry space in here a little coffee pot that they provided but just a nice little space in there a little bit of a window I wish there was a little bit more when I'm cooking. I like to kind of see that nice, beautiful view. Because I got a big window in ours. Over here, it's got a Norcold refrigerator freezer, which we kind of jam packed. But it's got little layers. Uh, we got something special cooking for tonight, you guys. So stay tuned for dinner. And we got a full on freezer, which right now the only thing in here is some ice cream. Because you know, Dave loves his ice cream. It's delicious. So I'll meet you guys back in the bedroom. back here having her afternoon bath in the bedroom all right so before we jump back into the bedroom right here i want to mention there's storage all along this wall which i you might have saw in some of the b-roll it's a walk-in closet for an rv in my opinion but it's got uh, enough to hang jackets clothes things like that as well storage in there come back to the bedroom area it's got a lot of storage it's got the twin bed effect which is very similar to our rv but in this one here it's, it's got a vizio tv we connect it right to our hotspot spot and boom we are watching movies in bed i mean it's got three tvs actually you saw one on the outside there's one in the bedroom and there's one in the living room i mean that's a lot of television sets but hey you know if you like your entertainment you like your entertainment but it's got two twin beds in here which are super cute super cozy windows big windows on both sides bailey she she already has claimed her spot as you can see she's right there she just likes to mm -hmm, she's having a little sun bath but there's a, a little bit of extra storage drawers underneath here as well these two cushions can come looks like it can come down to make an extra a uh, bigger bed and there's like sort of a I guess you could say a, a reading how would you call it a end table for your your bedroom area so this is going to be end tables for both beds here so there's a lot of storage there's a back window back here which does not open but just a big back window two windows on the side get that extra flow it's got the max vents in here one unit it's a coleman mac unit heating and cooling system right as well a little vintage a little older but hey you know what it's got a great use of space in this bedroom Really quick, let me just show you this here. So this wall right here is the bathroom, as you can see. This wall opens up, which is nice, and it can make yourself a huge bathroom area. So you walk into the bathroom, there's your cabinets for towels and things like that. It's got the shower space, as you can see, the sink, uh, medicine cabinet. Uh, and if you open this up, there's mirrors everywhere. There's, you just saw that behind me. But if you open this up as well, now you have yourself a ginormous bathroom area. 
equipped with no one can see ya from those big beautiful windows as you're trying to change you get comfy but i i will say i like the idea of this bathroom yeah a little vintagey i wouldn't choose some of the wallpaper aspect that's in here but you know it's an older model like dave mentioned it's a 2016 but the features of it having that space hmm, i can see how you can live in here for quite some time on the road it's quite the quite the space Ooh, okay, so that's a nice little vintage bathroom. Now, let me just mention really quick the tank sizes. The tank size is right, just so you know, we have a, I think it's a 42-gallon fresh. There's a 28-gallon black and a 28-gallon gray. So, you know, be careful what you put in those tanks because, you know, you just, you don't want a little overflow. And I've heard some scary things happening with a lot of folks in black tanks and gray tanks. So, just, you know, keep those numbers in mind. Oh, well, let me show you something else really quick. So, here's your control panel obviously it's pretty standard a lot of a's i'm sure they have this it's a, a thor motor coach so you got the slide retractor the black tank heaters the water pump uh, and the water heater which you can use via gas or you can use electric so that's what we have right there boom 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 there's your generator for start and stop boom 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 and here is the raise and lower level for your bunk bed if you so choose to use the bunk bed oh and that's an extra tv that's the third tv you saw the one in the bedroom you saw the one outside dave showed you and there it is right there oh and one last thing i want to tell you the huge difference for us in this rig besides the you know the space is the fact that it's not as insulated as ours i mean you could hear a quarter hitting the rocks outside but also the heat and the cold we have the heat on in the evenings we're about 10 over oh, 10 000 feet up nine eight nine ten somewhere along those lines but in that higher elevation the days are nice the nights are crisp and cool and as soon as that heat turns off it's cold in here so i feel like the insulation in our rig is so much more efficient for both the ac and the heat right bray bray so this is gonna be fun i am actually going to for tonight's dinner dave's got something special on the grill but i think i'm gonna pair that with a nice sort of grilled kind of charred corn i got a nice rub for the corn but i'm gonna boil it first look at that 103 pulp pan burger back there just make it a nice little charred corn that goes great with that chicken prep that Dave has going out there. So it's gonna be a nice dinner. I think somebody's excited. I see him dancing behind me. I see somebody dancing. No, it's not Dave. It's Bobby. I like to move and move it. I like to move and move it. Oh, Chef Dave, what do we got going on tonight here? What do you think we got? <laughs> chicken. Chicken. Little chicken tonight. Ah, great food. Chicken thighs. Chicken but thighs. first, hold on. Let's cue the B-roll. Music, maestro, light him up. little charred corn. I can't believe it's not butter. And that chicken, Dave, you made smells so delicious. And that post oak, infusing all that, is just gonna bring it on home. We're gonna smell like post oak tonight. Not only smell like it, we're gonna eat it. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, it's tender. That is tender. I love chicken thighs. Me too. Good, baby. Love you. Oh, love you. Mmm. Mm. That's really good. That's delicious. The garlic, the spices in there. And that post oak. Right, all blend together. You nailed it. You like it? I love it. It's cool. Oh yeah. So you kind of you boiled it a little bit. I boil it a little bit, and Are then you? you just you put it on just enough so it doesn't like dry out. You know That's what I mean? Cool. It tastes like too. Much. Mm. Oh my god. That's really good. Not good. Mm. This is a great meal, man. Like simple, 
right on the grill. Mm -hmm. Right? And effective. Oh, man. And you can feel the Alpen glow starting, and then we should probably get a nice view of the stars. All right, babe. First time black <laughs> tag. All right. First black. First black. Next gray. Then gray. Black. Gray. 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 Don't screw gray. that up. Don't screw it up. And everything's attached. Everything's locked in place. There we go. You ready? Oh, my God. Moment of truth. Moment of truth. Go, the infamous go, black go, tank. Go, go. Here we go. Yeah, there, and it there goes. it goes. All the goodness. Oh yeah, yeah, it's working. I don't have to show all that gross yeah, stuff. No. Anyway. There it is down there, y'all. He I did know. it. You gotta be careful with those uh, pull things. I hear they're a tendency to break. Don't want them to spray out at you. You don't want them to spray out at Pretty you. Pretty ugly. From the valve. No cassette toilet that here, folks. Disgusting. <laughs> We're joining the black tank crack. Ooh, there it is. Nice job. Oh, got I give you a high five, but you got your gloves on. So air yeah. high five. Good job, babe. Nice job. High five.